Hello everybody and welcome to the barbecue shop here at Hayes Garden World. We're joined by Mr. Richard Holden. Hello. Hello. And in this video we're going to show you how to do a Spanish influence burger. So Richard, Spanish style burgers, talk us through. Spanish style burgers, really simple. We've got some smoked paprika, uh, we've got some chorizo and we've got some good quality pork mince. This has been put through the mincer on a coarse plate. So if you go to the butchers they'll be able to do this for you. Um, we're going to have a little bit of a, a pork on pork on pork because we've got the pork mince, we've got the pork in the chorizo sausage. We're also going to cook off some bacon as well. So a little bit of everything going on in here. Um, but we've got uh, about a kilo and a half of the minced pork. And then we've got the chorizo going in there as well, probably about 200 grams. I've chopped that quite finely because it's not going to get cooked off um, separately. I want it to cook quite quickly okay. in the pork. So I've chopped that down um, just so we get nice little nuggets of that as we're eating our burger. A um, couple of tablespoons, we'll put kind of a couple of teaspoons even of paprika. Not too much though, because we have got the paprika in yeah. from the chorizo. Pop in some salt, and this is all going to get mixed together as well. Mold and sea salt, crunch it up as it goes in. And then in with our pepper. <clears throat> and what we'll do is we'll get, once we've got these, um, once we've got these shaped, the bacon's actually going to get baked, roasted off effectively. It's going to get cooked on the indirect while we roast, whilst we okay. put these on the, on the direct. So very quickly, just press this all together, mix it together, get your hands in there. Best way to do it really. You can feel when the texture's right. See the colours combining. The paprika will yeah. give it a beautiful red colour. Um, and also when the chorizo cooks, some of the, some of the oils Oil will come them, out yeah. of there and just keep it extra succulent. <clears throat> if you get really good quality pork as well, it does have great flavor. Um, if you go to the butchers and get some good quality pork, it'll be absolutely full of flavor. I think um, a lot of people are scared to ask butchers. They think they just go and buy it off the shelf, but a lot of the butchers nowadays are prepared to listen to what you actually want. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So. so that's ready to go in the burger press. That's all ready to go in the burger press. Okay. So Richard, you've divided the pork up into six portions, so we're going to get it into a burger press. Yep, and I'm going to give you some okay. oil there. So using the burger press, going to use it on the quarter pounder section. Um, just a little bit of oil on the base and in the lid will just help. stop it sticking. Things to stop sticking. So it will help the burgers to come out of the, the press as we're making them. It will also put a little bit of oil onto the outside of the burger so that when they go on the grill yep. they've got that little bit of extra oil around them. We're using rapeseed oil because it has a higher burn point. I wouldn't use um, I wouldn't use something like olive oil for this. No. It would just burn. So if we take that out and then a good firm tap and that comes out and the beautiful thing about making burgers using a burger press is that they'll all be the same shape. Um, so that means that the food will cook nice and evenly as well. One thing that the Weber burger press does, it puts a, uh, a dimple in the top of the burgers. It's quite hard to see, but there's a dimple in the top of the burger press that actually puts that dimple that you need in the top of burgers yeah. for when you're cooking them. Just helps them to cook nice and evenly. So yeah. again, if we take the base off, and if it gets to a point where they're starting to stick again, you just pop me a little bit of oil on there. Put you off guard. Yep. There we go. Just a little bit on there. Perfect. It's one of those things a lot of people don't be afraid if you, you make a mistake or you're not happy with the shape, just put it back into a ball, stick yeah, it yeah. back in a burger press again. Nice, you know. nice little tip actually to begin with though is to divide everything, divide the mixture before you start pressing them out yep. and then you can make sure that your burgers are roughly the same shape and size. Um, if you just start taking chunks off then you might end up with a little bit at the end. Give it a nice firm tap. <clears throat> finish with this? I'm finished with All that. Right. Take this down, put it out of the way. Last one. Nice firm tap. And then they come out. Perfect. Okay. So these are ready to go on the grill now. So Richard, our burgers are ready to go on the grill. They are. They're okay. ready to go. Let's, Let's take it over there. So if I can give you the non-stick spray. Yep. As I said, we've got some oil on the outside of these from the burger press. But a nice little extra touch is to just spray that cooking surface with the non-stick spray. Just, just helps make sure that they will come off. Um, I always say to people, if you put oil in the frying, if you put oil in the frying pan when you cook in the kitchen, then it, it stands to reason that you're going to put a little bit of oil on the grill as well. 
what I will explain why you're putting them on is we've set this barbecue up for direct cooking, so which means we've got an even heat across it. But what we've actually done is we've set this barbecue up with a 70-30 a split. So over this side, we have no coals at all on the grill, which is where we're gonna put our bacon. So this is one of our three little yeah. um, com pork components. So we're just gonna basically roast this off. Get it nice and crispy, it won't burn. We can cook with the lid down. There we go. And the last two pieces, there's just a little bit of a gap in there. So we'll get that on. Okay, Face close. right in the smoke. Let's put the lid down on that. Yep. Common, so common error most people make when they're grilling is that they leave the lid open. Lots of fat drips through. Smoke um, creates flame, basically. So keep, keep the lid down and that will create smoke, as we can see coming out of the chimney, yep. out of the, um, the vents. And uh, we won't get it flare up into the grill. So we're going to give them a couple of minutes and we'll come back and we'll turn them over and check on the bacon. After a couple of minutes, we just check that the burgers are ready to turn over. And you can see we've got beautiful caramelization. They're not burnt, they're not charred, they're caramelized. If the burger, if the meat comes away from the grill nice and easily, which these are, that's ready, as simple as that. So we put the lid down and we're gonna give those about another three minutes. Um, it'll be absolutely fine. And then we'll come back and check them for internal temperature. So Richard, should we have a look? I think so. Look at oh. those. Do a quick temperature check. So what temperature are we looking for there for cooked food? 75. 75, 75. 75. There Perfect. you go. Right, so. so. I'll start assembly. I will take some off for you. So I've got two, two bread rolls here, and I've just, in this little bowl here, I've just taken a couple of avocados, really nice ripe avocados, and just pressed them out with a fork. I'm gonna use this instead of butter. Just put that on the bottom of our burger buns. Okay. You ready? And then, if I can put my knife down, we are, yeah. And then I will take a little bit of lettuce. And I'm almost ready for you. If you want to pop the first one on there, on there for me. There we go. And then our second one there. And we've got our bacon as well. So bacon's gonna go on top. And while we are getting that, just a little bit of mayo in the top. I think there's enough for two. Is there enough for two rashes per? We can do two burger? rashes if you want. We could do two rashes. So this is kind of it's Spanish inspired. It's got that BLT because it's got the bacon, the lettuce, and the tomato. We've thrown some avocado in there. So this is just a real mixed influence burger. But if we grab, I'll leave them just on there. We don't need them at the moment. <clears throat> I'll save those for the crew once we've got this all sorted out. No, that's seconds. There we go. Look at that. I'm not going to press that down because that just looks amazing, but I am going to press this one down so that we can slice through it and have a look. So while you're doing that, if you want the recipe for this, uh, this dish, uh, visit our website, hayesgardenworld.co.uk. Uh, we're across all the social media platforms. Look at that. That looks pretty good. Sorry, you were talking about social media, weren't you? Yeah, I was doing my job. <laughs> anyway, whilst we get tucked into these, um, you got all distracted now, haven't I you? Did, so you're on Instagram, been, Facebook, uh, Twitter. Twitter. All the all the social media. Website. Website again is hayesgardenworld.co.uk. YouTube. We're on YouTube. We're on YouTube. We're on YouTube. It's already on YouTube. Okay. I'm gonna eat this now. So we'll see you next time.